The Deputy Chair of the Committee looking into the future of HS2 has branded his own panel's draft report as dishonest and lacking in balance and has asked for his name to be taken off it. Uh, Lord Tony Barclay says his concerns over the financial viability of the high-speed link have been ignored. Well, we're joined now by our correspondent Andy Bevan. And Andy, this is astonishing stuff really, isn't it? Yeah, uh, things are turning really nasty uh, before this report is even officially published, which doesn't happen until after the general election. But yesterday, um, a, rep a report into the uh, viability of HS2 uh, ordered by Boris Johnson, was leaked to the press. And in it, the uh, chair of the panel and author of the report, Douglas Oakeby, was said to have recommended that the whole HS2 project go ahead as planned. Now, remember, this is Europe's biggest infrastructure project. Uh, it goes uh, all the way from Birmingham to London, and then it goes to uh, Manchester and leads in a Y shape. It's officially put at £56 billion in cost, but it's reported to have already risen to £88 billion. Well, today, the deputy chair of that review panel, uh, Lord Tony Barclay, a former head of the Rail Freight Group and a critic of HS2, uh, has published an open letter to Douglas Oakeby, which slams his recommendation to go ahead with the project. In that letter, he says that the uh, report is misleading and dishonest. He says it shows a lack of balance because it based its conclusions on figures from HS2 alone without including any from any independent sources. And it uh, does not seem to answer many of the issues involved. And Lord Barclay is also annoyed because the uh, review panel was only supposed to make consultation about the future of HS2, not rule on recommendations, which effectively, he says, has decided the future of HS2. He's asked for his name to be taken off it, and this afternoon he told us this on the phone. I think it is a bit of a whitewash, which is a great shame, because it's a question of looking to see how you can save a bit of money, which is what we were asked to do. But we were not asked to make recommendations, and I think it's wrong that we should make recommendations, because I think that's a matter for, gov for ministers. Given a week or two, um, I shall produce my own report, which will give my views on, based on what we've heard and what I think should go to ministers to enable them to make a decision. Well, Andy, we heard him there on the phone, but what is Lord Barclay saying about the cost of HS2? Well, he says that he has independent analysis which puts the total cost of HS2 at £103 billion. That's nearly twice the original estimate. He also says that uh, Doug Oakeby's cost versus benefits to the taxpayer uh, are based on HS2's figures uh, of running 18 trains uh, an hour. Um, and most, in fact, all uh, high-speed networks across the world run 14 trains an hour. Now, he says, look, if HS2 actually only ran 14 trains, but actually cost £103 billion, as he said, then the cost-benefit to the taxpayer is actually a minus figure. Uh, and he said that might uh, induce ministers to think again about building the whole project at all. Well, today, the uh, Department for Transport told us that Doug Oakeby has not finalised his report. Uh, it was before the election was called, and no copy of it has been provided to the department. They said they will deliver it to the new government, and uh, any views ahead of that are pure speculation. Clearly a lot going on, Andy, and clearly we're going to be hearing a lot more about it. Thank you very much.